So Freddy Krueger is more than a little pissed off because the kids of Springwood, Ohio have forgotten about Freddy. They no longer fear him and with Freddy unable to instill that fear, he can no longer haunt their nightmares and kill them in their sleep. That's when Freddy comes up with a brilliant idea to resurrect the one and only Jason Voorhees and literally turn him loose on Elm Street, hoping that Jason will kill just enough teenagers to instill that fear again so that Freddy can come back full throttle like never before. However, Freddy Krueger's plan backfires when Jason kills off way too many people, way more than what Freddy Krueger anticipated, sending Freddy into a fit of rage. Now I cannot believe I overlooked this movie for 17 years. Freddy vs. Jason came out in 2003. I think I was in like 9th or 10th grade when it came out and I was like a little preoccupied with like doing whatever I was doing, you know, smoking pot, hanging out with girls. I wasn't really watching a lot of movies at that time, but I was always a huge horror fan and I always overlooked Freddy vs. Jason, but I just finished this movie for the first time. I mean, I've seen bits and pieces of it throughout my life, but I never finished the movie. This movie was fucking good. I mean, this was the perfect film for Jason and Freddy to both be in one Hollywood film together. This was an amazing movie. I've watched it two times already. I love the way this movie was executed. The storyline was great. It was a really good movie. I enjoyed the shit out of Freddy vs. Jason. Now throughout the mid to late 90s, the horror genre was actually considered dead until the release of Scream. Scream was more of like a meta style horror movie, it kind of made fun of itself. That's when you notice like Scream made fun of horror, but it was a horror movie in itself. Horror was dead up until that point, so like, the game was changing a little bit as far as horror movies go. In all actuality, Scream really revived the horror genre. Now the idea of Freddy vs. Jason actually came in the 1980s, I think in the early 1980s. They actually had ideas of putting Freddy and Jason in a movie together. The creator and director of Friday the 13th Part 1, Sean Cunningham, claims to have taken credit for coming up with that idea, that iconic idea to put Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees in one movie together. However, a lot of people in the industry take credit for that idea, so I don't think we'll ever know who actually came up with it, but it was a brilliant idea because Freddy and Jason are two of the most iconic, beloved horror icons of all time, and putting them two in a movie together, that's just like, that's fucking epic, man. Like, that's epic, really. That is an epic idea. That's a perfect idea for a movie in my opinion. So pretty much everyone behind the scenes already knew that a Freddy vs. Jason movie was eventually going to be made. I don't think the fans really knew about it until the end of Jason Goes to Hell when Freddy's glove came up out of the dirt. Now I was actually five years old when Jason Goes to Hell came out in theaters and I actually got to go see it and all I can remember is that ending scene. Everybody in the theater just going nuts when Freddy's glove came up out of the dirt and pulled Jason's mask under. That let all the fans know that there was definitely going to be a Freddy vs. Jason movie. And a lot of fans thought that that movie was going to come out a lot sooner than it did. Freddy vs. Jason didn't come out for another 10 more years, so fans were waiting for a long time for Freddy vs. Jason. And when they finally made that movie and put it out, it was a masterpiece. Now I'm pretty sure that the main reason that it took so long for Freddy vs. Jason to be made was because of the two companies involved. The Friday the 13th franchise was owned by Paramount Pictures and A Nightmare on Elm Street was owned by New Line Cinema. And you kinda gotta look at it as like, they're two brands, like legally there's so much legal shit involved for them to take, for Paramount Pictures to take their product, put it in a movie with New Line Cinema's product and sell it. And for everybody to be happy, like everyone has to get paid and like people bitch about like how much money they're making. So like it took that movie so long to be made, but I'm glad that the film was actually made. They finally came to an agreement somehow. The creator and director of Friday the 13th Part 1, Sean Cunningham, actually moved over to New Line Cinema from Paramount. After that transition, I think that's when the movie was set in motion. That's when Freddy vs. Jason really started happening and really started being a topic of discussion when Sean Cunningham switched from Paramount to New Line Cinema. Yes! Thank you, Mr. Cunningham. Now, the craziest idea that they came up with actually turned out to be pure genius, hiring an Asian director to direct Freddy vs. Jason. Asian director Ronnie Yu directed Freddy vs. Jason. If you don't know who Ronnie Yu is, he's the same guy that directed Bride of Chucky. Now, Bride of Chucky was an awesome fucking movie. I loved that movie. My favorite was always Child's Play 2, but I still loved Bride of Chucky, and Ronnie Yu really delivered when it came to Bride of Chucky. So I'm pretty sure that they knew that they had a good director in their hands, someone who was really um, competent enough 
to direct the Freddy vs. Jason movie. Because if you're going to make Freddy vs. Jason, it has to be a banger. You have to go out with a bang. And Ronnie Yu kicked ass in Ride of Chucky. He did a fantastic job in that movie. And after watching Freddy vs. Jason, one thing I can say about Bride of Chucky and Freddy vs. Jason is that both movies were cinematic as fuck. If there's one thing that I love about movies, especially m movies from like the modern ages, is the way that the movies are filmed. Like there's the camera work that's done and the editing and like the coloration. Like both of these films were so cinematic and it's just like, like the scenes just like popped out at you and like the coloration, like the blue filters that they use over the scenes, like the scary scenes and shit. Like it's just done so perfectly. Bride of Chucky and Freddy vs. Jason were both directed and filmed so wonderfully, like I loved both of those movies. Ronnie Yu really did a good job directing Freddy vs. Jason and Bride of Chucky. Okay, now that I got that out of the way, let's talk about some of the things that I liked and disliked about this movie. After praising it for so long, you would probably think that there's not much negative I can say about it, but there were some things about this movie that I definitely didn't like, and we're gonna get into that, but first I'm gonna go down my list of positives and let you guys know about the things that I really loved about Freddy vs. Jason. And my first positive is that the story was actually believable. If you're writing the script of Freddy vs. Jason, you have to be able to answer the inevitable question of how the hell Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees would actually cross paths to begin with. And I think that they did a really good job of trying to explain that. Now Freddy Krueger thinks that the kids of Springwood no longer fear him, but it's actually the parents who are feeding their children this medication called Hypnocell, where it makes them not have nightmares, therefore rendering Freddy Krueger powerless. And that's when Freddy decides to resurrect Jason by posing as Jason's mother in his dreamlike state and then orders Jason to go kill the kids in Springwood. It was actually kind of cool. Jason makes his way to Elm Street and then goes into Nancy's old original house and kills this dude named Trey. And after that, the police start to question if it was Freddy Krueger or not. So Freddy's plan is working. He's creating that fear again. The problem is that Jason won't stop killing people, ultimately leading to the fight between Freddy and Jason. So the story was on point. Then we get the acting performance of Brendan Fletcher as Mark Davis. There's this scene where when Freddy finally gets his powers back, he kills Brendan Fletcher in his nightmare, and the way that Brendan Fletcher acts this scene out is fucking epic. It feels like a scene pulled right out of the original Nightmare on Elm Street movies. That's how effective he was. Like how he looks up into the air and goes, Somebody please wake me up! Please! Fucking perfect. Also, the blood and the kills. This was actually a gory ass movie. It was way more gory than I was even expecting, if that's possible. The special effects were great. We get some guts, a whole lot of blood, and at the end of the movie, Freddy and Jason are both beaten to a pulp. And this next positive probably won't surprise any of you, but Robert England. This was by far the best Robert England Freddy Krueger performance that was ever shown on screen, hands down. Freddy's one liners were fucking iconic. Ready for your thoughts, Chief. Even Freddy's makeup was great, better than the Freddy makeup from a lot of his other movies. You mean you're not coming? It's not my fault this bitch is dead on her feet. <laughs> The pros definitely outweigh the cons. We actually get to see a scene where Jason is a little boy getting picked on at camp. We always heard the stories and legends about young Jason in previous Friday films, but in this movie they actually show us and that's fucking awesome. Okay, my next positive is Jason's eyes. Now, I know traditionally we're not supposed to see Jason's eyes through his mask, but it's done for good reason here. It conveys a certain emotion that us as fans are not used to getting with Jason. When I first seen Freddy vs. Jason, I thought that Jason's look was a bit silly, but after living with this movie for a little while, I think that Jason actually looks pretty badass. Like the way he looks at Trey before he kills him, or like the, just the way he looks at Freddy Krueger, his eyes really add to it. Whoever came up with the idea to make Jason's eyes visible throughout this this whole movie, I really commend because it really added to this movie. I also like how Bride of Chucky and Freddy vs. Jason both have heavy metal soundtracks. That's like the perfect music for these movies, and I don't know if that was Ronnie Yu's decision or not, I'm guessing that it was, but heavy metal is like the perfect music for Freddy vs. Jason. Which leads me to my next and final positive, and it's the way that Ronnie Yu really built up that fight between Freddy and Jason. He did it in such a way that really made you cheer on your favorite icon out of the two. Now we get two confrontations between Freddy and Jason. And the first one, Freddy sedates Jason and then he goes into his dream and tries to kill him. Now any normal person would have been a corpse in Freddy's nightmare world, but since Jason is like an entity from hell himself, 
Freddy has a hard time killing Jason, which I thought was a really cool detail about this movie. Yeah, Freddy had the home field advantage, and yeah, he kicked Jason's ass, but no matter what he did, Jason just wouldn't die. But as soon as Lori pulled Freddy into the real world, you knew that Jason was about to kick Freddy's ass. The way Ronnie Yu built that scene up was fucking awesome. Freddy at first didn't realize that he got pulled into the real world. He looked back all like petrified. Jason chucks this table and you hear this heavy metal music and you know it's about to go down. The way Ronnie Yu built that scene up, you literally felt like jumping out of your seat and being like, fuck him up Jason, fuck Freddy, uh, get that motherfucker. It was fucking awesome. Like the hair on my arm stood up and on the back of my neck. It was like a classic WWE moment. It literally felt like you were watching a wrestling match. It was just, it, it was really nostalgic for me. I loved that fight at the end. It was fucking awesome. I loved it. Okay, now for the negatives. And these next two negatives kind of go together. First, I'm going to talk about Ken Kurzinger as Jason. Yeah, Ken Kurzinger is a huge guy and everything, but Ronnie Yu pretty much ordered Ken Kurzinger to walk around like Frankenstein when he wasn't killing nobody. And it's actually kind of ironic. Ronnie Yu stated that he didn't like the way that Kane Hodder moved around like Frankenstein Frankenstein and Jason goes to hell. And in Freddy vs. Jason, Ken Kurzinger walks around like Frankenstein. Ken Kurzinger moved around slow as fuck in this movie. He wasn't terrible as Jason, but he wasn't all that great either. Which leads me to my next part of this negative. Passing up on Kane Hodder to play Jason. That is completely blasphemous in my opinion. Kane Hodder is the Jason. He played Jason in four movies in a row. He did The New Blood, Jason Takes Manhattan, Jason Goes to Hell, and then Jason X. He was pretty much known as the Jason. That's like having having somebody else play Freddy Krueger in this movie. Robert England is the Freddy Krueger. Kane Hodder should have definitely been Jason. I don't know why Kane Hodder was passed up for the role. It even went as far as the studio sending Kane Hodder the actual script and telling him to get ready that Freddy vs. Jason is going to be in the works soon. Kane Hodder described this period of his life as one of his low points. He said that after a while the studio started acting real distant and shady and he started getting the impression that they just didn't want him. Ken Kurzinger was actually the stuntman for Kane Hodder and Jason takes Manhattan. And that's pretty fucked up, man. That's completely blasphemous. Kane Hodder definitely should have portrayed Jason in this movie. I mean, I do understand that they did want a big guy to play Jason. They did say that when Freddy and Jason were face to face, they wanted Jason to like tower over Freddy Krueger. So that wouldn't have worked out too well if Kane Hodder was in that role because He's not that big of a guy as far as height goes. Ken Kurzinger is like a monster, so I can understand that part of it, but still, it's fucked up. Kane Hodder played Jason four times in a row. He definitely should have been Jason, just like Robert England. They had Robert England, but no Kane Hodder. It was fucked up, and that's probably my biggest negative. My next negative is probably just as fucked up as the previous ones, and it's that Freddy Krueger only killed one person in this whole entire movie, and it was Brendan Fletcher, that scene I talked about earlier. How are you going to have a Freddy vs. Jason movie and have Freddy Krueger only kill one person. That's fucking ridiculous. However, with all that said, I still love this movie. I give Freddy vs. Jason a 4.2 out of 5 stars rating. Freddy vs. Jason was amazing. My biggest regret is that I overlooked it for so many years. I definitely should have watched this movie when it came out. The acting was really good. There was no boring spots in it. In fact, this might be one of my favorite movies that I've seen this year so far. So you guys definitely need to go check it out. My name's Justin Ray. Thank you so much for watching this. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button and that little bell next to it so you can receive notifications every time I upload shit. You guys have a good day. Stay tuned for more videos. I'll see you guys on this side or the other side. Peace, motherfuckers.